Welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Norman Santo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Oh, what a tragedy. Everybody wants to be my enemy. But we all know Mantine holds that title. <laughs> uh, so, what? Mantine is top or bot? Mm. He's at the top of my list, but he's below the sea waves. Uh, so he's mid then. Dichot- all right. Yes, curse this dichotomy. All right, all right, all right. So he's mid lane. So uh, don't let him feed, or else uh, you're gonna you, people are gonna call you noob and um, really degrade you and stuff. <laughs> oh, they do that no matter what. It's oh, that's true. The, it's the internet. Have you played Overwatch? <laughs> I have played Overwatch. I know. The, the new Fist- thing is, <laughs> sorry, Doomfist. He's not a great character, but for some reason, I just love playing him. True, but Halo, Halo Infinite, uh, have you played it yet, or no? No, no I, I don't have an Xbox One. I think you can play it on PC, Steam. That is an option. Well, I... Mm, mm. On Steam, oh, wait, no, no, Steam. I have Stadia, Google. Ah, st- wait, what? You have Stadia? Yeah, Google Stadia. Well, you, you have it, really, like the device and everything, or what? Actually, you know what? They never get, sent me the device, even though I I got in on the by buying Red Dead Redemption on there. They never sent wow. me that device. My bitterness, like the controller. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, okay. I gotta go gripe at them later. Thank you for reminding me of transgressions long past. <laughs> well, here, like, on the MB- uh... here on the NBA show, they say there's no grudge too small to settle. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I'm just asking because, like, um, Microsoft, uh, what was the new gimmick for Microsoft now? It's the Game Pass, and uh, $10 a month gets you a lot of games. It's the Netflix of gaming, from what I can, uh, from what I hear, and it's worth the price of admission. Uh oh. Wait, how much is the price? $10 a month. Mm, mm, mm. And you can play it on PC. Mm. But I don't have so, a PC. I'm Mac for life, baby. Yeah, my pretentiousness can, knows no bounds. You can site load PC stuff on Mac. I think they call it. Uh, what would it, what do they call it? God dang it! I'm I'm such a PC user. <laughs> oh boy. Well, but we'll call it what it is. Oh, what a tragedy! <laughs> okay, but well, anyway, we're not talking about um that. We're talking about. Our King League of Legends. Yes, we kind of hinted about that last week. And this week, we are going to, well, talk and discuss. Not really review, because reviewing nine episodes is going to be hard in a hour and a half, probably. Yes. So, oh. we're just going to go for um, arcs and teams, because I-, I think that's much easier then. Sounds good to me. Alrighty then. So, before we officially start, um, I'm on the wiki page here, and I don't see a synopsis or whatever it is, so... I'm just going to read the description. Based on the world behind League of Legends, Arkane divides into the delicate balance between the rich utopia city of uh, Piltover? Piltover? Piltor, Piltorf, and the city oppressed underground of uh, Zuan, known across Runeterra as the city of progress. Many of the most brilliant minds call this city home, but certain, uh, sorry, but the creation of Hextech, a way for any person to control magic, magical energy. Uh, threatens the balance. The story follows the origins of two iconic League of Legends, right? League champions, and the power that will tear them apart. Like the game on which it is based, Arcane is aimed at 16 plus audience, but we know that child will play this game and call your mother a bad word, oh no, and will deal with some more adult subject matters. So, 
Silver, what are, what's your first impression of this show? Well, I have never played League of Legends, so I will start by saying I have no idea who any of these characters are. But I grew to like them very much very quickly. Uh, I like how this show really follows the lives of several people at several social strata uh, layers. And as a result, you get a clearer view of the city and also a sense of, well, no one's totally in the right here. It's very tempting to say that Vi is right when she condemns the upper levels, but then she doesn't fully appreciate all that they're trying to do to bring equality. She, you know, she's in that place of, well, denouncement just makes her feel better. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, Jace has stepped into uh, an arena of which he is not prepared. He's learning on the fly, and he really can't... Uh, understand the plight of the people down below in Zon. So the criticisms leveled against the upper layer are valid, as is the anger, but not necessarily how uh, that anger is expressed. And Jinx, you feel bad for, but also you're like, okay, at, at some point you just feel like someone's got to put this crazy lady down. It's too, she's yeah, too it's far true. gone. She's too far gone. She's the Harley Quinn. You know, uh, when I first saw her figure at a, at a Target store, I thought, oh, they have a Harley. <laughs> uh, yep. She, she, she plays the insane pigtail girl emulating Harley Quinn. Although even then I felt bad for her because we spent three episodes devoted to her origin. Oh, that's true. So and the origin for Vi. Mm -hmm. So as for me, um, I did play a bit of LOL, but I, I couldn't really get a game on because I, I don't know why. When I tried to play the game, it wouldn't let me. Like I, I played a few games, I kind of enjoy it, and I want to play more. It didn't let me. It could be a sign. So in the end, I uninstalled the game and I just trash it because... I couldn't play it. And this was the time during when uh, the Pokemon um, MOBA was out. So I was kind of in a kick off MOBAs. So I, I played, I replayed Dota 2. I replayed, uh, sorry, I, I replayed, uh, sorry, I played Dota 2. I played Hearthstones. No, Hearthstone is the other thing. No, um, I played. Um, Heroes of, what was that Blizzard thing called? Whatever Heroes, Heroes of, of whatever the Storm. It is. Yes, Heroes of the Storm. I I played that, and then I also played uh, the Pokemon thing, and I played LOL, and just to have a, just just to have fun, and overall it was just okay. Like, I'm I ain't good with it, so it was just okay. But um, for the show itself. I heard a lot of good things. I heard a lot of people say that they enjoy it. Uh, and overall, it was good. And after watching it for myself, I have to say that it is good. It's just that for me personally, I feel like it's the, hmm, the team that it was going for was all over the place. And I, I think we can start off with the first act. <clears throat> so, Arcane is a nine episode um, show. And I feel like after three episodes, they ch kind of change the story on you. So, the first act is the introduction act where we see a bunch of rambunctious kids. Uh, what? You have Vi, Jinx, um who who now uh, some kid like some kid another kid and yeah um, a, a bunch of kids uh, kind of doing a job like they're rugrats miscreants kind of from the under city trying to make a name for themselves trying to get a quick buck and 
they decide to uh, steal from this location where it was agreed upon the elders that they won't do it. But yeah, this this kids thinking that they're hot stuff decides to do it. And Silver, what do you think? Well, I think the most consistent theme throughout this entire uh, season is the conflict between the young and the old. The kids are hot-blooded, and they want to make it big score. They, they'll risk big, they'll disregard authority, and they'll try to make a name for themselves. Uh, meanwhile, the elders, particularly the bar manager... Uh, Fender. Fender, he's just trying to keep them alive and safe, as is the commander of the City Watch. And so you have these conflicting interests, and this is going to continue throughout the show. Uh, it will take different forms with different characters, but it will be cons uh, pretty consistent. I think the conflict we witness here with the kids will evolve into Jace's dealings on the council. But uh, you, you quickly find out who you like and who you don't in this thing. True, and mo true. mostly the, the boys are a bit punks, so I wasn't terribly broken up over what happened later. <laughs> Very well, unsubtle what? spoiler there. Yeah, but I was kind of sad when the big guy kind of bit the dust. But, but no one feels bad for the braggart. Eh, eh, I mean, eh. eh, eh, eh. But, uh, ah, oh, dang, I think I, I had a thought and then I lost it. Ah, oh, too bad. Hmm. Oh, yes, but, it, it, hmm. it was the fight scene. My bad. Oh, During yes. the fight scene, after the kids have made this big steal and caused all manner of havoc, they run into a street gang. And I was impressed by the brutality of the fight. I mean, you saw these kids taking a punch, and it's by no means just a tap on the shoulder. And I know this sounds weird, but I'm actually going to compare it to why I like Jackie Chan movies. Hmm. Okay, uh, that is weird. By an odd coincidence, I had also seen a video talking about Jackie T Chan's style. And you notice that in his movies, he takes a lot of hits from the op opposite team. You know, he's not just mm -hmm. a kung fu master running through and uh, beating everybody without a worry. He takes some some punches. And Vi, you know she's a tough girl, not only because she can take on this gang and win, but also she takes some pretty brutal hits. And yet yeah, she, and... she carries on. That, that is true, that's true. I, I did notice that, but the Jackie Chan comparison was not there in my head. Probably I didn't see the video that you watched to kind of spark that, what you want to call this, um, comparison. But yeah, um, I, I do I do understand what you mean. And also at the same time too, um, when I saw it, I wasn't really expecting that level of brutality. But now it's there, and oh... You've only begun to see the brutality. Oh yeah, that, that is true. Like, mm, uh, I know this is violence. Like, uh, I was thinking, like, okay, this is a Netflix show, so and also it's a animated movie or series, so we will see some stuff. I mean, it's not going to be that bad, right? And we do see some blood flowing and whatnot. I mean, it's it's a pretty violent show. That's the thing. It's a pretty violent show. Yep. And. Yeah, you mentioned the bullies. We we see them, um, haggling them, and Jinx here, or as she's called, Powder, kind of runs away, and you you can see the tone that they're going for. I mean, like I mentioned before, um, the tone of the movie is very confusing. <clears throat> you start off the show with a bunch of kids, uh, um, kind of doing a score and uh, botching it and whatnot. And you kind of see like, oh, maybe this is one of those uh, kids show kind of thing. 
But then you see this older guy trying to essentially murder a child. Yes, that would be the, the main villain? Mm, no, nah, it's just the bullies for now. Oh, just the bullies. Like, in that initial bully fight. Like, Powder's running away and she's trying uh, not to get caught and whatnot. And so... I, though I did wonder, like, when Powder throws away the score to keep it, well, safe, ironically, or to keep mm-hmm. herself safe, I was like, hmm, how bad is that water that no one wants to dive in after it? That's true, or how deep it is and whatnot. I I, I guess we did get a uh, semblance of how bad it is with the villain. Yep, so just idle speculation. But like I mentioned before, one of the issues for me is the theme of the show. With It, it starts off like, um, for me, it starts off like a Disney princess kind of thing. I want more. I want more. And the father figure vendor here says, oh, no, you're not ready. And you don't understand the intricacy of what we've built here. And you kids mess it up. Oh, and stuff. And yeah, (laughs) the kid kind of fucked up on this one. Uh, As kids are wont to do. But this is just big. They fucked up big time here. Well, you know, when you blow up a house. Yeah. And talking about house blowing up, we introduce to Chase. Though he's not as prominent a figure for a while. It's really only when he when he becomes more powerful politically that you start taking interest in him. Until oh, then, yeah. he's I mean, just a naive kid. Kind of. And um, we are introduced to his um, dreams and whatnot. And Jace here is, uh, is, is the character... Sorry, um, Jace here has this dream of using magic to... Um, what you call this? Using magic to advance the world of... Uh, pill... Oh. Torf. Well, advance everybody. He wants to, yeah. to change the world with Hextech. At the time, it's not called Hextech, it's called Magic. But still, um, he wants to do that. And he's been doing some, in this universe, iffy research. Like, it's not by the books. And because of the kids, one of his things got exploded and kind of destroys his home. Well, actually, it destroys, I believe, his uh, sponsor's home, which is even worse. True, true. And with that, they did an investigation and call him in. Um, we are introduced to Heimerdinger, and Heimerdinger is a character in the game, funny enough. Who knew? <laughs> yes. But still, um, he's kind of Jesus mentor, figure and says that we built the city on rock and roll no not really we built the city to get away from um, magic because magic was the thing that was um, destroying us and we want to get away from that and magic is not the answer and I when we see you at the trial try not to talk about magic and once we are at a trial, Jace talks about magic. I do see a theme here about the youngins trying to set a name for themselves and whatnot. Yep, they don't heed the caution of the elders, but at the same time, the elders are per, are themselves out of touch. Despite uh, his I mean, looks, Heide- Heidegger is, what, 500 years old? I think 1,000, probably? I don't... He's well, old. he's up. He's up there no matter what. And that longevity means he remembers why they do what they do. But he also fails to appreciate how fleeting time is for 
others and how they want to accomplish something in that much reduced time span. Yeah, he. Sorry, uh, I think Jace mentions that because uh, for you it's easy because you have a long lifespan, but us humans don't, and we want to enrich our lives fast. Um, we want to enrich our lives now, not later. Uh, you can take the time, but we can't. So that leads to some very genuine conflict. That is true. That is true. So. It seems that Jace didn't hear what Heimerdinger has to say, and uh, Jace's mother comes in uh, pleading for her, and instead of banishment, Jace just is banned from the, sc the school or association, I, I don't remember, but he's banned and he's not allowed to step foot in campus anymore. And that kind of depressed him at some point. And but he, he has an unexpected ally. Ah, and who might that be, Silva? The teacher, the head principal's assistant. Who, ah, yeah. Who does something uh, no one expects because at first you think, oh, he's just going to be sort of a Weasley ambitious guy. No, he's got his own story and and reasons for what he does and that makes him far more sympathetic than i would have first thought uh i believe his name is victor mm -hmm. also another character in the game ah well i will say his drive and his determination to change the world is going to have some pretty rough consequences itself yep and, and Sorry? And perhaps that Victor is perhaps an example of one of uh, Arcane's weaknesses. With so many people at play and such a story to tell in just nine episodes, some elements get rushed over more quickly. I think Victor's is one of them. Oh, I, I see what you mean. Because at first, okay, uh, I have to take a step back. Uh, for people who play the game, know the characters in and out, they know, who, they know who's going to live. They know who's going to survive and whatnot. But for us, as the audience at home who got no idea about the game and only just watch Arcane, we got no idea who's going to live or die. Obviously, Vi and Jinx are going to survive because, well, they're characters in the game. But Victor here, he doesn't look anything like the his character in the show. So we got no idea. Back on track, we do see that uh, Victor here is intrigued with Jace's uh, plans and wants to assist him in achieving his goals. We're not privy to what he wants to do. We, we, we just know that he wants to help mankind advance. That's about it. Help them advance, but he has one of the best lines in the entire show. Oh, uh, in trying to be great, we forgot to do good. Oh yeah, that, that that's a good one. That is a good one. Yep. I, but I think that's later on. Still, in who? It's um, much, it's much later on, but it gets to the heart of Victor himself. Mm, that is also true, and. Later on, um, they kind of they they both go back to the campus because, uh, tomorrow they're going to dispose of, uh, Jace's research work and whatnot. And we're introduced to Mel, another character. I don't think she's in the game, but we're introduced to her, and she is kind of a uh uppity character, rich person who sees potential in Jace and wants to. S help him advance also he has her own thing going on for her and again uh when i first saw her i thought oh she's gonna be the greedy uh politician who wants to take advantage of him and lead him down a corrupted path which she kind of did she kind of did but then she also changed her mind and 
we find out about the pressure she's facing. Uh, what I like about this story is that, that nobody fits cleanly into a category. Even the worst of them demonstrates remorse or, or awareness or even a mm, sometimes twisted version of love. That is true, that is true. So um, let, let's try and uh, speed up with uh, the first act. Uh, we, we see that the upper levels and the lower levels are not... Well, they, they have some kind of agreement, but we do see that uh, the, the underworld is manned by a person called Vendor. Uh, he's the bartender, he's the guy that keeps the peace, and make sure everybody is well taken care of to his best abilities. But he he's just one man and everybody seems to kind of say that he's gotten weak. And yeah, I mean, him trying to take care of the Ribuan is not easy. And at the same time, we are also introduced to a bad guy named Silco. And Silco here is the brother to Vendor? I'm not, not 100% sure. Biologi not yeah. biologically, uh, as far yeah. as I know. Hmm. So they're they're kind of brothers in the in the in sense of the word, but they have a disagreement, they have a falling out. And <clears throat> Silco is a bit ambitious and wants to rule the underworld and kind of pull it uh, pull it out and be independent while Vendor is just trying to make a living, like make everybody kind of live okay. Not in poverty, but still tr try to make everybody survive. And because of what the kids did, the people at the top wants to blame it on someone. And I'm just going to jump everywhere on this because if we don't, we'll be spending three hours on this. So uh, after hearing this, Vice decides to sacrifice herself for the cause or just for uh, keeping the peace. But Vendor no uh, sorry, Vendor hearing this decides to stop her in his track on her in her tracks and sacrifice himself for the greater good. But the greater good. <laughs> the greater good. But Silco has other plans. Uh, he wants his revenge and does so. And in doing so, the kids the kids the kids oh my god the, the, this is one of... The kids are annoying. I have to say, the kids are annoying. Some of them are. I mean... Echo and... Uh, man, I forget the two short-lived fellows. Pim? Pim, sorry. Pim. Pim and... Bulldog? Quite possible. They they have varying levels of, but no one I, no one strikes me as wholly good or bad or annoying. I I just feel that they are. I mean, like especially Jinx or Powder. But I do understand why she's that way. Why she, why why she's that and. Throughout all the, sorry, throughout the first act, we see that she has a abandonment issue, superiority complex, and whatnot, and we do see that she has certain issues under her belt. <laughs> so yeah, um, with that done, um, we see that the kids, that's five him and also the big guy kind of go and try and save him but we forgot to mention that Silco here has created some kind of drug let's just call it Venom because 
That's what it is. It's the um, Batman Bane Venom thing where pumps it up becomes huge and strong. If you play Batman Arkham, it's that. I forget the exact name of the, the substance as well. Uh, either, oh, way, either way, it, it's something terribly destructive and not meant for humans. Or, truthfully, any living being. And with that, we're going to wrap up part one here. Uh, join us next week for the second part. And, well, we'll see you guys next week. See ya!